Thanks to our friends at the RAF, Red Pine is conditionally open for pilots to fly in and enjoy this backcountry strip. So where is Red Pine? It shows up as a closed airfield, 282 degrees off of Presque Isle, about 72 miles. The closest airfield is going to be the Clayton Lake, which is a private strip. If you want to get into Red Pine, the best place to start is the RAF's airfield guide. You can find it at this address here. When you click on it, it's going to bring up a map of the United States. You can zoom into Maine, and you'll see it there in yellow, and select the field. Once you select it, the first thing that's going to happen is a disclaimer is going to pop up that you need to acknowledge. When you make the acknowledgement, you'll go to the website, which has all kinds of information. And you'll click on the briefing section to get details on how to get in and out of the field. The briefing guide is very thorough and gives you all kinds of information about the closest weather station, closest airports, what frequency to use when operating in and out of the field. Also, there's some notes, warnings, and cautions. At the bottom of the briefing guide, you're going to see a comment about the North Main Woods Visitor's Permit being required. When I called the North Main Woods office in Ashland, they had no clue what I was talking about. But I was able to get a copy from one of the guys that drove in, and this is what the permit actually looks like that you're required to get. The flight up to Red Pine was pretty straightforward, but from any direction you come in, you can expect it to be very isolated and not very populated at all. So if for some reason you're gonna have an off-field landing, you can expect to be in a survival situation. So plan accordingly. Let people know where you're going and dress to egress and be prepared. The only markings on the runway are these X's and then a displaced threshold when you're landing on what they consider runway four. This is the approach end of runway 22 flying down the entire strip so you can get an idea of the condition of the asphalt. As you proceed down here to the south on 22, you're going to see a left-hand turnoff, which I'll cover in more detail. But that left-hand turnoff is actually where the RAF expects you to go and not necessarily where we went when we went in. So sorry about that. Do as we say, not as we do. So right here on the left, you can look down there and I'll show you in a second. That's where the pilot parking is supposed to be. And then you'll continue on down the strip to see the displaced threshold, which is 720 feet from the south end of the runway. So that leaves 2,355 feet usable when landing to the north. This is where we parked when we came in. The campgrounds will be here on the right. That little path off to the left connects up to that other section that I mentioned. So we saw the displaced threshold and then coming down here, we're at the end of the runway, the usable surface. Here's another shot of 2-2 looking to the southwest. The river is off to the west and then we'll transition to runway four. This is on the approach end, looking all the way up runway four. You can see where the aircraft were parked, don't park there. Here's the displaced threshold that you'll see 720 feet down the runway on runway four. And this here is the sign that marks that inter intersection adjacent to the windsock. So the X is there, the sign's there, the windsock's to the right of that X, and that's the parking area the RAF actually wants you to be. So this is looking towards the west, towards the river. And here we'll make a turn looking down runway 22, making a left-hand turn into the parking area. The sign's right there ahead. Down on the left, there's actually some fire pits, and there's also an outhouse on the far end at the left 